On today's show, we'll discuss a meeting held last week by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's Petition Review Board to hear issues brought forward by Friends of the Earth regarding the continuing problems at Southern California Edison's San Onofre plant. Joining us to discuss this is Fairwind's Chief Nuclear Engineer, Arnie Gunderson. Arnie, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me, Kevin. Arnie Gunderson joining us by Skype. Arnie, this whole process around San Onofre has been so confusing for me, and I'm sure a lot of people. Can you, you know, you just presented at the NRC, which is uh, at the uh, NRC Petition Review Board hearing in D.C. a few days ago. And, you know, like I said, this is part of a long process. Can you kind of uh, help our listeners and help me understand where this all came from? Yeah, you're right. It is a long process, and, and I think it's, frankly, a deliberately confusing process. <clears throat> There's um, the Petition Review Board uh, is something called a 2.206 petition. Public has a right to seek regress from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission through only one process, this 2.206. Uh, so they had a Petition Review Board where I testified at this week. That is not what Friends of the Earth wanted. Friends of the Earth wrote to the commissioners and they said, you know, your 2.06 process doesn't work. We, we need a different process. And the NRC said, nope, you've got the 2.206 and that's, uh, that's all there is to it. So for our viewers, maybe even go back a bit further. What was Friends of the Earth petitioning? What started this whole thing? Yeah, that's a, a, a great question. At, at the beginning of 2012, so a year ago, San Onofre steam generators failed catastrophically. There's nothing like it on the planet. The damage inside those generators is uh, extraordinary. So the Friends of the Earth asked me to take a look at it, and I dug into it, and I determined that the reason for the failure in 2012 is because way back when these things were designed in 2003, they, uh, they made some really crappy assumptions. And that led to a generator which was doomed to fail in, 20, in, in 2012. Now, the reason those assumptions weren't caught by the Nuclear Regulatory Commission is really the heart of this whole argument. The NRC allows Edison, Southern California Edison, to make the decision on their own whether or not you get to um, apply for a license amendment or whether a change is so small it doesn't need a license amendment. So they were, they were upgrading their, their steam generator tube system. They were modifying it or changing the configuration. And what you're saying is typically they would apply for a, a license amendment uh, to cha make such uh, dramatic changes to the uh, hardware configuration. Yeah, that's it exactly. They, they wanted to change their steam generator, but they didn't want public participation in the process. So even before they bought the generator, even before they did any analysis, they specified in their design spec what the answer would be. And, that, and that's that there's going to be no public participation in this process. We are going to claim that the changes we make are so small that the public doesn't have to be involved. So that decision was made in 04, and the NRC wasn't aware that the plant was going to be modified until 06. So there's um, a, a long, dark, windy road that uh, the public was kept out of for, for years. So typically, a nuclear plant would be required... Uh, than to uh, do some sort of analysis of how dramatic their changes would be and then file with the NRC and basically ask permission to do this sort of an upgrade? Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, if, if, this, if your steam generator broke and you went out and you bought the identical steam generator, you wouldn't have to file with the NRC. Well, the problem is that Edison made dozens and dozens of really significant changes. They went where no man had gone before in steam generator design. And as a result, when they turned these things on, they broke. They failed catastrophically. And the NRC wasn't informed of all the changes that had been made. So at that point, there was a problem at San Onofre. The steam generators broke and there was a leak. They had to shut down. Um, at that point, Friends of the Earth uh, wrote a letter to the NRC saying 
what? The Friends of the Earth uh, wrote a letter last summer to the NRC, and it said, hey, the public should be involved and should have been involved in this licensing process. So we want you to fire off the licensing process and uh, let's get public participation into the process about how these steam generators were ever made. So then, like Southern California Edison, is the NRC's position that Southern California Edison did not need a license amendment, or is that what this process is trying to determine? Yeah, both Edison and the NRC have come up with the conclusion that, yeah, the steam generators broke, but there was no possibility of Edison being aware of this when they applied for their license amendment. So the NRC and Edison are marching lockstep that the public didn't have to be involved and shouldn't have been involved. So it's, it's Friends of the Earth and Fairwinds that are saying, no, 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 when you look at the evidence here, there's plenty of warning signs that these things were going to fail catastrophically. The NRC won't let us see the evidence to support their position, and it's been really frustrating, Kevin. But the evidence that you're talking about is the paperwork, as I understand it, that Edison would have done as part of the 5059 process that the NRC lays out. And that is when a nuclear plant wants to make modifications, they have to assess for themselves uh, the, the, the nuclear plant operator or the licensee, I suppose, has to say, okay, are these changes uh, so dramatic that we need to file for a license amendment? And as part of that process, if I understand, they determined that no, these changes were not dramatic enough to require filing for a license amendment. But Friends of the Earth and Fairwinds are saying, yes, they were dramatic enough to require that they should have filed for a license amendment. Yeah, you know, th this is complicated and it is confusing. And the, um, the, the, but what makes it the most difficult part of the process is that the Nuclear Regulatory Commission won't share the information upon which it made its decision because Edison hasn't given it to them. That all of these documents are locked in a room at Southern California Edison and the NRC walks into the room looks at the information, never takes it out of the room, and then hands it back to Edison. Well, what that means is that they never take possession of it. And what that means is guys like us at Fairwinds and, and, and Friends of the Earth never get to see the bases for the decision. And these documents that Edison has locked in the room are the documents that they're using to justify not having to apply for a license amendment. These are the documents that Edison is using to justify their position to not apply for a license amendment. No? That, that's correct. So the, the evidence that these things ripped themselves to smithereens by, in 2012 it should be pretty clear that somebody did something wrong. But yet Edison is not allowing us to go back to things that they wrote in 03, 04, 05 to determine uh, if they, what did they know and when did they know it. So back to this letter that Friends of the Earth wrote to the NRC following the steam generator tube failure at San Onofre. This letter was not actually a 2.206 petition, was it? No, uh, the Friends of the Earth didn't want a 2.206 and didn't ask for a 2.206. So the NRC sat on that letter for six for four months, and then in uh, November they said, well, you're not going to get what you asked for, but we'll give you a 2.206 hearing, which is the thing that happened this week. So the 2.206 hearing is a hearing uh, with the filers of the petition, Friends of the Earth and you and even the public, sitting in front of the Nuclear Regulatory Commission's Petition Review Board. Uh, tell me about that meeting. I gave a PowerPoint presentation that was right on the mark, and we brought a whole bunch of new information to the NRC about Edison should have applied way back in 03, 04, 05, that there were significant differences. And it's crystal clear from the, the PowerPoint presentation I made that, that that's the case. But during the hearing... The, uh, the first in command of the, uh, uh, the chairman uh, actually fell asleep during the middle of my presentation. <laughs> I, 
<laughs> yeah, his eyes were rolling back and his head was bobbling like a little bobble doll. So he's very interested in public input. Right. And, and then the second in command kept saying, well, I'm on a clock. I have to get this resolved really quickly. Are you done giving us information? You know, how much more information are you going to give us before I have to make my decision? Um, so it was uh, it was very frustrating when, uh, you know, basically I came away with the conclusion that the NRC already made up their mind, and um, no matter how much new information we brought to the table, we were not going to succeed. So, Arnie, one question. You, you said that the NRC, even this far along in the uh, process, is saying, you know, how much, uh, how much more new information are you going to be giving us? Uh, but earlier you said that there was some paperwork uh, that resulted in this 50-59 process that the NRC never took possession of, and it's the basis for Edison's decision to not file for a license amendment. Would that paperwork be helpful for Fairwinds and or be helpful for Friends of the Earth in providing the NRC with more analysis and more information? Oh, God, yeah. Yeah, they're hiding the information, and then they're saying, well, what new are you telling us? It's really, really frustrating as, a, you know, as an engineering expert witness to not be able to see the calculation. Um, but even then, I believe that I, was def I could definitively prove the case that these things should have been licensed way back in 0405, and they hadn't been. But you could tell by the audience questions at the end that they were frustrated too. How can you possibly ask us what new are you telling us when you won't show us what you know? And that's the problem with the Nuclear Regulatory Commission and this whole process is that the public is designed to be frozen out. So again, a lot of confusion. And let me just dig a little deeper in this uh, 5059 issue. You're telling me that the NRC does not actually have the documents that Edison is using or did use to justify not applying for a license amendment. If the NRC doesn't have the documents, uh, how can we demand those documents of the NRC? You're absolutely right. The NRC doesn't have them. They're locked in a, in a building on, on the Edison site. But the NRC is the regulator. They can ask for the documents. They can say, now, these are really important. We need to put these in the public document room. But the NRC is not taking that step because they really don't want the public to see what the process did back in you know, 04, 05, 06. So if they took the documents, then they would be required to release them to the public. You got it. So they don't want to take the documents because then they'd have to release them to the public. If you were able to read these documents, what do you suspect you would find? Well, you know, the, the secret is always in the assumptions. Um, it, it's never, <clears throat> did they add one plus one to get two? Of course they did. But the assumptions they made need to be examined. You know, what did they assume for the temperature or the pressure or, or, or the other key parameters? And my guess is that they made non-conservative assumptions. They made assumptions that would justify their answer, when in fact there was better assumptions out there that would have forced them to go to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. So the secret is not in how they add it, but how they chose the numbers that they were adding. The key is in the assumptions. Do you think that eventually these documents will come out? I hope so. I certainly hope so. But I don't think the Nuclear Regulatory Commission, Edison, or the entire nuclear industry wants that to happen. So it's a real uphill battle here for the public. Good afternoon. My name is Michael Rodriguez, and I'd like to thank everyone for attending the Category 3 public meeting. The meeting is to allow the petitioner, Friends of the Earth, represented by Mr. Richard Ayers, to address the NRC Petition Review Board, also referred to as the PRB, regarding the 2.0, excuse me, 2.206 petition dated June 18, 2012. This is a Category 3 public meeting where the public is normally invited to participate in the meetings by providing comments and asking questions throughout the meeting. In this instance, the public will have an opportunity to ask questions pertaining only to the 10 CFR 2.206 processes after the petitioner completes his